The other thing that you can do with if statements is called nested ifs. And let me actually show you guys that. For those of you that have not seen our QGP UFT automation frameworks videos, you will get to see a lot of nested ifs there for when I am beginning to develop my automated frameworks functions. And go check them out after you guys finish this VB script tutorial, of course, where you will get to see the complicated ifs. I mean, you're welcome to go and check it out before. No big deal. But if you want a complete understanding, I recommend you take everything slowly, guys. And make sure you master one step before you move on to the next. Anyways, let me show you guys that really quick. I believe that's here in the test section. So for example, here we have a function, doesn't matter what it does, but I will show you guys nested ifs. You guys can see here, if a result is equal to P, in my case, the framework knows that P is pass. Then we perform an action. And that action returns me a result. And with that result, I need to do something. And so I create another if loop that does something else. So see that if the result is equal to P, this result, right? Then I do something else. And then I get a result back. And then if that result is a P, then I do something else. And you guys see why that's so useful in automation? Because sometimes you have scenarios that depend on one another in order to continue. So here, I need to get a pass from this function in order to perform the rest of the steps. If I don't get a pass, I don't need to perform the rest of the steps. So I won't continue into this if block. Same thing here. If I don't get a pass from this function, then I won't use this if block. You guys see that? That's called nested ifs. And another thing that I will recommend to you guys for the nested ifs is to use these start and end statements to clarify where your if statements are starting and ending when you have nested ifs or any kind of nested loops. It really helps. In this case, you don't see my ending conditions here because I was actually designing this under timed conditions, and so I wanted to do it qu as quickly as possible. But I should have taken a little bit more time to comment. But so the way it works is when you have one if statement, you comment next to it that it's the start of an if loop that does some action. And then you copy that statement, you find the end of that if block, and then you put that is the end of that if statement. Here's the start, here's the end, just so it's easier to see. Next, I have this if statement. So I'll just copy this over, come over here, and paste it just like that, change that to an end, and that's a very quick and efficient way to get all your starts and ends. And so now you can see that if I have all this nesting going on, I can see, okay, here it starts of the if loop that says the web edit with the password. Okay. Oh, and here is the end. So everything here depends on this if loop. So that's how you guys can see that. Just a quick convention for you guys to follow because you won't find this elsewhere. I try to incorporate everything that I've learned over the years into my teaching so that you guys can benefit. So just, you know, use it if you want. If not, you know, whatever.